So I went back and played Gran Turismo 3. This game for those of you that don't know is the second most best selling game of the PS2 after GTA San Andreas. Receiving a 95 score on Metacritic, it is the most successful installment of the series and arguably one of the most important exclusives to ever grace the PS2. Which is why it's weird to me why they never made an HD remake of the game or resold it over the PS3 and PS4 in the PlayStation Store or PlayStation Now. If you want to play this game you either have to get a copy of the game and the PS2 or one of those rare PS3 with backwards compatibility and the other option is to play it on a surprisingly stable emulator on the PC which is what I did. As soon as I started the game nostalgia kicked me right in the nuts. The first thing that is very good about Gran Turismo 3 is how memorable the soundtrack is and how iconic are the game sound effects. Some of them can even be dated back to the first Gran Turismo. Going into the game you wouldn't believe how much content you have for a game that came out in 2001. You have the arcade mode which is what I took as a bonus mode where you can play around unlocking all the tracks in the game and gain two nice cinematic ended credits sequences once you finish the mode. You had two player split screen which is a great feature to have back in the day and time trials that can unlock a car for you in the simulation mode if you ace it. Simulation mode is the main mode of the game where you start out your career with a limited amount of money. You can purchase a couple of beginner cars and each choice would make your experience a whole lot different. I myself took the Toyota Vitz on this run and made a completely different playthrough than what I'm used to do which is buy the PT Cruiser, grind till you win the Sunday Cup 26 times, get the Mitsubishi, save up until you can get a Viper and grind for the Suzuki Escudo picks which is ridiculously OP and can ace most tracks who don't require tons of handling. After that you grind out some endurance races until you get the Formula 1 which is the car that will help you ace most of the races and it unlocks the end game content which is a racing series for F1 vehicles and each one of them is an endurance race in it of itself kinda like Formula 1. Before you begin all of that you need to finish the license challenges that unlocks every level of racing including rally races which are a separate content and can be accessed without going through the previous licenses. People always knocked on licenses but I kind of embraced it and enjoyed them as some of them did took skill and made you a better driver overall. You can knock all of the license challenges out in one hour or so if you're a decent driver and it's a great tool for new players to learn the game. Most of the cars you buy could be instantly improved if you got the money for it. Tune it out and soup it up to get a noticeable difference that can make a stock car outrun full-fledged sports racing cars which was always fun to do. You had some customization as far as what type of wheels you wanted and choosing the car's color when you purchase it first but not much after that. You can play around with how long the gears were and other things that I admit I never tried and are probably there to satisfy the crazy simulation crowd who loves this kind of customization. You can also buy different types of tires to get less wear and tear during endurance races or maybe get a better grip but you will pit much more frequently. So you bought your car, you got tuned and you're ready to race. Well you have many options. Either you take the beginner's races like the Sunday Cups or after you progress you can find tons of specialized races like ones that are only for cars with turbos in them or the Alteza only challenges and cars origin specific races like Japanese, European and American race series. You can also find long endurance races that would add the pitting mechanic into the game which in some cars you can ignore and in others it would ruin your races completely if you don't pit when you're supposed to. There are also time based races which means you need to race for 4 hours for it to end which can be a pain in the ass but at least it's more content in the game. As soon as you win an entire series or all the races in a contest you get a reward card reveal which is one of the most fun and satisfying mechanics in the game that made Gran Turismo and Sega Rally in my opinion the best racing games as far as progress goes. While playing the game there were a couple of ways to cheese the system like slamming into cars sending them to the wall like they were criminals in Game of Thrones and the ability to ride the wall instead of slowing down and taking a turn like everybody else. While it's a terrible oversight using other cars as a way to ride the turn and sending them to the back of the line 
felt more like a skill to me, the game unintended to create, and while it would be a pain in the ass online or in a real simulator, it's fun to have against an NPC, and that's one of the things that made this game so fun before the series became almost completely a simulation that punishes this kind of behavior. The game did have some things that needed to be worked out, like when you pit your car, it just magically lifts itself into the air and changes the wheels without changing the wheels, or the fact you had a car wash, but I don't remember the car ever accumulating dirt justifying a car wash in the game. Or the fact every car in the game has no driving and is essentially driven by a ghost. You had all of that and other small issues that were later addressed in Gran Turismo 4, which is the most polished game in the series in my humble opinion. Ignoring all the nostalgic factor which is really hard for me, Gran Turismo 3 is a close to perfect game that is easily playable even today with decent graphics for today and a great one for back at the day. The game had a simple, somewhat grindy progression system that was super fun, rewarding and enjoyable even though it was grindy like I just said. While the game had no damage mechanics, I don't think it's to the game's detriment, but rather it's the right way to play a game like Gran Turismo. And I don't judge it or Gran Turismo 4 for not having it. Considering the amount of content and replayability this game has from a guy who sunk days of gameplay into it and finished the game from scratch a couple of times, this game is easily a 9.8 on a scale of 10 because it had some issues that made it a bit less than perfect, and those issues were later addressed in Gran Turismo 4. The game definitely stood the test of time and could easily be playable today if you made it into a mobile game on the phone or with an HD remake for the PS4. Please make it a think polyphony, it would be a quick and easy money grab for you and I bet you can stuff it with microtransactions as long as it doesn't change the core gameplay of the game. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video guys and share it around, it helps a ton. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.